Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and today is Tuesday. It's also, I believe, I'm pre-recording this, but I believe today is Halloween. So for all the kid kiddos that are going out tonight, trick-or-treating, I do hope that you have a lot of fun and you enjoy those sweet childhood memories of being able to play with your friends on the sidewalk in your costumes and get your your bounty of candy for all the parents out there i hope that you have a lot of fun too um sharing these memories and these moments with your children for everyone else that likes to party on halloween please be safe please be careful watch your drinks and watch out for each other now today we are going to be looking again because on tuesdays we look at channeled work and again we're we're, we're looking through the Great Human Potential by Tom Kenyon and Wendy Kennedy. Right now we are in the section of the uh, Pleiadians. And this is uh, starting on page 83 is Conversations with the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadians, the Universal Game post 2012. Now this is a long chapter, so I am going to divide it up. Today might be rather short, but again, because today is a holiday, I didn't want to make you feel obligated to sit and listen to this when you should you know, be enjoy be enjoying time with your uh, with your children. So we're going to start with the uh, the first part of conversation with the ninth dimensional Pleiadians, the Universal Game Post twenty twelve. And I just want to note something. A lot of people did believe that the world was going to end or shift in twenty twelve, especially because of the Mayan calendar. Now, two things here: we don't actually know what our real date is. I think most people. I don't think you have to be a conspiracy theorist to understand that. We don't really know what the real date is. I mean, I, I've laughed about this before. We look at like historical figures like Cleopatra, you know, who lived in BC times. You know, she wasn't like, oh, great. In the next few years, we're going to be at year zero. You know, like it, it's it's just um, it, it's it's so different. We know that the Greeks had their calendar set differently than the Romans, and so yeah, the the twenty twelve thing. However, was a big date. And I know a lot of people, again, expected the world was going to shift or end or whatever. And I think people were really disappointed when supposedly nothing happened. But from my understanding, and again, take everything with a grain of salt, do your own research, all that kind of stuff. Something did happen at the end of 2012. We started to shift into an accelerated timeline in order to move into fourth density positive, which is the probability of where we're supposed to go is fourth density positive. Um, I, in, in, from my understanding, the timeline, we have been given extra time just so people can get out of the gray. As you guys know, if you've been on this channel for a while, it is alleged that planet Earth is one of the most difficult third density planets to be on. All third density planets are polar polarized planets, meaning that there is good and there is bad, and that creates that friction because the whole point of third density is choice and you need friction. You need to understand duality in order to make choices. But planet Earth takes it to a an extreme. The evil on this planet is one of the worst, uh, worst negative polarized evil than any other planet. But with that being said, we also have to remember is because it is a planet of polarity, because there is that much evil, there is also that much goodness. All right. And so um, so I think it's interesting that they have the post 2012 uh, conversation coming up here. And I have not pre-read this. As you guys know, last week, they we, we found out this book was written in 2013. So one year prior. And of course, now we're 10 years down the line from 2013. Um, that playlist will be down in the, or the playlist for this series will be down in the description box below under show notes, under understanding the Magdalene. So if you have missed those past episodes and you would like to go back and re-listen, you can do that. If you want to get this, purchase this book for yourself, I'll have my Amazon affiliate link in the description box below where you can look at books used on the show and this will be in that category. All right. So looking at this chapter, it looks like the, t the, the words that are in, um, italics are uh nancy or excuse me wendy kennedy or tom kenyon whichever one is channeling the palladians right now it's probably wendy kennedy because i know that tom kenyon channels the hathors which is coming up in this book so this is her asking a question trying to get clarity from the palladians in the information concerning the grand experiment you say that we are also at the end of a universal cycle and when this process of integration is shared with the universe it will change it so dramatically that the game will be finished if I understand correctly, 
Our 26,000 year cycle was about our life in the now amongst the process of integration. The universal game is about all other lives being transformed by this one life. For the game to be over, wouldn't all the lives of all beings in the universe, some of which never incarnated on earth, be integrated? In my understanding of it being over, I don't think it's like the end of the world. I think it's like we're evolving. And it's for our planet, not for, you know, humans. I, I really think us humans have this kind of narcissistic perspective where we are like the main event. We're like the, the only ones in the universe, you know. And so I think when they talk about that, they're, they're, they're talking about it from what's happening to us on planet Earth, not necessarily what's going on on some other planet, because that's not really our concern, right? What's, what's happening? We're, we're responsible for Earth, right? All right, but let's see what the Palladians have to say. Not entirely. As humans, you tend to think of finite terms, and it is an infinite universe. The end of a universal cycle simply means that you are shifting focus and implementing a new set of rules. New players or new challenges to the game. So yeah, that's going into fourth density. It's a whole new, a whole new ball game of learning and growth that we're going to do once we go to the next, the next grade, if that makes sense. It is the same thing that you experience on the smaller scale with your astrology as you move through the signs of the zodiac. You have a sequence of general trends that you wish to experience. So it is with the universal cycles as well. The human mind fears that the end of a cycle means that it will cease to exist because that is how you perceive your life on the planet. You think you cease to exist when you die. So you try to apply the same logic to the universal game. Neither works that way. You are an infinite being and as such will continue to infinitely expand and contract. Never do you cease to exist. At source level, all are integrated. In order to complete a cycle, it does not mean that all beings everywhere must have an awareness of their expanded self. Those of you on Earth are playing a game of dissension and reascension, which meant for you, from your limited perception of self and separation, needed to have an understanding of yourself as a universal being of light, having a human experience. You didn't need to access all those lifetimes consciously. Your goal was to release as much judgment and as many perceptions of separation as possible until you increase your frequency enough to cross the dimensional barrier, which you have accomplished. You are currently residing in the fourth dimension. Now, I want to make this very clear to you guys. I talk a lot about densities. We are moving into fourth density. Density and dimension are two very, very separate things. And I think what's happening or what I see a lot in this community of people grasping towards spirituality all of a sudden who've never been in a spiritual world, have only come from religions or something like that, a lot of people are missing the fundamental, the 101, the beginning stages of what spirituality is teaching you. And that is covered very well, this misunderstanding in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali in a 5,000-year-old text. A lot of people believe that who they are as a person is who they are as a spirit. And as is, st is stated in the Vedic text and in the ancient text, that is where your human suffering comes from because you are confused by who you really are. You're in a state of Maya. That's a Sanskrit word that means illusion. All right. And that's what they're saying here like at the beginning of this, where he said, you think you cease to exist when you die. So, and this is why yoga is such a powerful practice because the personality that you're in right now, the avatar that I'm in right now, the person known as Bryce, this is my experience for this life, but it is not who my soul is. Whoever you are watching, your name, your identity, your life story, that's just an experiment experience for the now moment that's not who you are as a soul and we get attached so Patanjali goes on to say that our suffering is because we get attached 
to our mortality. So when the day comes that I die, when the day comes that you die, because we're all mortal beings, the experience for me, the experience of Bryce is then over. But my soul was never Bryce. And so I, I say this, I use this example a lot. Like if you go to an amusement park, if you go to Six Flags over Georgia or any type of an amusement park, all the rides at the park are different. They're all creating a different experience for you in that ride. A different adrenaline, a different type of simulated nervous system response. But you as the person in the roller coaster know it's just a ride and it's going to be over and you're going to get out and you're going to go to the next ride. So I want you to see that kind of like all the lives that you live. Me as Bryce, this is just the roller coaster ride that I'm in right now. My soul knows this, but my brain doesn't because the brain is part of the experience too. Does that make sense? So I see a lot of people start their spiritual journey on the wrong foot because they still have not, they haven't, they haven't taken the kindergarten class yet of spirituality. They tried to jump right into like college level understanding when you got to go back to kindergarten and learn your ABCs and your one, two, threes first. Does that make sense? You can't read a college level thesis if you don't know your ABCs. And a lot of people haven't learned their ABCs in spirituality and they're trying to jump straight to that college thesis. The first the first moment, the first step in spirituality is understanding, having an understanding that your human body, your life is literally just an experience. My boyfriend says it the best. I love the way he says this. Our soul, your immortal soul, picked the avatar that you're in right now, picked the ride that you're in right now, because whatever that life had to offer was going to simulate an experience that your soul needed to refine itself. So if you have more questions about that, we can do a whole episode just talking about Prakriti, which is the Sanskrit word for nature, Parusha, which is the Sanskrit uh, word for your soul, and Ishvada, which is the Sanskrit word for God. These are the three elements you're, you're working with when you're in body. The only two things out of, out of the three of those, Prakriti, Parusha, and Ishvada, the only two things there that are eternal and real and immortal are the Parusha and the Ishvada. The Prakriti, the nature, is just a simulated experience. It's just an illusion. That's all it is. But we, our suffering comes because we confuse. We think that the Prakriti is what's real when it's actually the Parusha in the, in the Ishvada, Right? And so, and so that's kind of what they're, they're referring to. Like, they're basically saying you're very confused at this moment. You think that because shifting into fourth density, which is the nature, the dimension is the consciousness, the density is the nature, that all of a sudden you're going to die and cease to exist. But that's not true. It's just an evolution. It's just the, the, the spirit changing, if that makes sense, into a new ride, a new experience. Anyway, let me know down in the comment section below if that's confusing and we can definitely do a um, bigger episode on that. We can even probably, I can probably talk to some of my colleagues in the um, traditional yoga world to see if we can do like a round table on it. Um, yeah. Okay. So you're currently residing in the fourth dimension. So that's the spiritual consciousness. That's not the body. Again, go back to that property and Purusha. Density is the experience of nature dimension is the experience of consciousness all right it is one of transition and highly malleable which allows you to apply either third dimensional or fifth dimensional rules of perception and creation to it the third and fifth dimension have very fixed rules to dimensional structure and because they are so different you needed a whole dimension to adjust to, to shifting between them most of you have no awareness that you have shifted because you are applying the 3d principle to the 4d matrix but what you are beginning to play with is the application of 5D rules to a 4D matrix. Eventually, you will be ready to fully immerse yourself in the 5D version. And at that point, your life will shift out of fourth dimension and into the fifth one. As you have gone through this process of ascension, each of you has entered his or her, his or her own unique procedure for integration, which includes compassion and the release of judgment into the universal records. All beings then have access to information if they so choose to receive or to retrieve it. And you think of it a bit like discovering a new route to a destination. You can continue to take the old winding dirt path or you can choose the new paved direct route. It is your choice. 
but most would choose the new direct route. And so it is. Many will access compassion in a new way, and it will forever color their perception of everything they experience. Once you learn something, it is rather difficult to unknow it. It's like once you see something, you can't unsee it. That's when I first started getting heavily into yoga philosophy. Once it hit me, the whole idea that the body is not the soul, I was like, oh, I, I see. I, I can't unsee that now. Now everything makes sense. Now all of my attachments, all of my fears make sense. Because I'm confused by who I really am. Who I think I really am is a temporary experience. I'm not, who I really am is not the temporary experience. It's the soul having the temporary experience. All right. But we must say you are pretty good at giving it a go in 3D. It is also why 3D is such a special dimension. It is unlike any other in that you experience the illusion of separation, which allows you to forget some things. That's a choice. But we actually agree to that by the rules of the game to come through amnesia. So don't let people tell you that the amnesia you suffer when you're born, where you forget who you are, is some like conspiracy by the dark forces. No, no, no. That's the rules of third density. Because you have to make a free will choice. And so when you come into the game of third density, the ride of third density, you agree to have amnesia so that you can make a clearer free will choice. I see that a lot too. I see in this whole world of like conspiracy theories and truthers, it's like people are forgetting that goodness also exists in that a lot of what's happening to us and, 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 and the reality and the experience are things that we chose for our soul chose for a particular reason to experience that friction for its own ascension and evolution. And so we give our power away and we fall deeper into illusion by saying, oh, it's this person's fault or it's that person's fault. No, you pick to be here and to have this experience. And once you make that ownership that, yeah, I actually wanted to go on this ride you release that burden of being the victim and having an oppressor. So let me read that again. It is unlike any other in that you get to experience the illusion of separation, which allows you to forget some things. We say forget, but you never really do. You simply choose not to access certain files or memories. So you chose this. No one did it to you. It was your choice. All benefit from the unique experience of a single individual. But when enough of you experience or create similar vibrational frequency, it amplifies the signature, broadcasting it and making it easily available to many. You can think of it like a radio signal being broadcast. Once the volume is up, more people can hear the broadcast. The stronger the signal, the further it can be sent. So then the channeler asks, how is the galactic community affected by the end of our cycle? With the end of a universal cycle, all beings have an opportunity to complete issues that they must have been working on. Different systems and dimensions all have unique games running. With Earth's ascension, and as you continue to learn and integrate non-judgment, those in other sectors of your galaxy also have access to this information and will most likely directly benefit from your experience with the close of this galactic cycle. As Earth is a grand experiment, you are playing out many of the galactic issues at the individual and collective planetary level. What many of you consider to be your galactic family are other aspects of you. And as you learn how to integrate, those other aspects of you too can access and apply that information. Let us give you an example. In the Lyran Sar star system, you may be feline and you find distaste and judgment for others who are not of your species. On Earth, you may be one who has released judgment about others who are not the same race or creed as you. The information is transmitted to all aspects of you. So the feline aspect can then apply the lesson. Your feline aspect may suddenly find himself or herself perceiving other spe species in a new and open way without ever having a conscious awareness that the human version of you deposited wisdom and knowledge into their energetic field. All right, you guys, and that's where I'm going to stop it for today. That's kind of the introduction to this final chapter with the with the Palladians. Like I said, it's quite a long chapter, but we will finish the rest of it up next week. Um, it's quite a lot to think about just with the opening. Again, let me know your thoughts and your opinions, or if you have any questions about the fundamental aspects of spiritualities that we spoke about in the beginning, let me know, and we can go over that again in more detail on the channel because I, I do... 
in all sincerity, I do feel like a lot of people in this world are getting hoodwinked because they haven't actually had the opportunity to understand the basis of all spirituality. So, um, so yes, let me know if I can help uh, clarify any of that. For those who might be new to this channel, um, the reason why I say that is I this is this is what I'm what I have my education in. I'm the only female in the state of Georgia to have a particular authorization from a particular school in India involving this intense philosophy and this intense understanding. So I've spent 17 years now studying this. So that's why I say I can do, you know, if you're new to the channel and don't know why I would say that I would talk, that's, that's what I do for a living outside of outside of YouTube. So if you guys want me to go deeper into this, I will absolutely do that. Other than that, once again, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Enjoy Enjoy spending time with your kids. I hope you have lots of fun, lots of laughs. And I hope that if you are dressing up, that you have so much fun in your costumes. And I will talk to all of y'all, all y'all later. Bye, everybody.